The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everyone, good afternoon. Welcome to our March webinar, how to speed up repetitive multi-step processes and ensure accuracy with easy workflow automation. My name is Nicole Schmeida. I'm the marketing specialist here at Docuer and I'll be moderating today's session. I also want to take the time to thank you for choosing to join us today. And we hope that all of you and your families are all safe and healthy. The webinar you'll see today will be presented by Nicole Moody, Inside Sales Director and Document Management Expert here at DocuWare. Before we begin, the webinar is being recorded and I will email that to you tomorrow morning. And in the handout section of your GoToWebinar panel, you can download a short case study on how a truck dealership implemented DocuWare to streamline business transactions, improve communications, and make their operations more efficient. There is also a product data sheet that has in-depth product screenshots and descriptions for further review. On the right, you can see today's agenda. For the first few minutes, Nicole will introduce the DocuWare solutions and then go right into a live demo so you can see them in action. And then we'll open it up for Q&A at the end. Thank you again for joining us today and I'll pass it off to Nicole. Thank you, Nicole. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for joining today's webinar. With DocuWare, it's easy to move from manual processes to digital workflows and securely store all your documents in a centralized database. The system allows you to build custom workflows from simple to complex that mirror your current processes. Documents are automatically routed for real-time decision-making and improved productivity. Process Planner is a free tool provided by DocuWare. It allows you to collaborate as a team and visually put together a process to see how documents flow through your organization. With the Workflow Designer, you take the steps outlined in your Process Planner and assign specific tasks to those steps. With the assistance of the Workflow, we can automate your previously manual process, making your business more efficient. Finally, stay on top of your workflows through notifications of a new task via the task list within DocuWare or through an email notification that lets you know you have a new or updated task that requires your attention. DocuWare is typically deployed in the accounting and human resources departments since they're usually very dependent on paper. However, DocuWare can transition over all departments, allowing workflows to be created specifically for how each department functions. Okay, now let's see DocuWare in action. I'm gonna start with the process planner and create a new process. Then I'll show you the process within the workflow designer and finally carry out the workflow example in a live system. Okay, let's get started. The first thing you wanna do is go to processplanner.docuware.com. Create an account by simply entering your email address and password. You'll then receive an email that will require confirmation. Once confirmed, you're ready to go. I'm just going to go ahead and log in since I already have an account. So I'm going to go ahead and start a new diagram. At, on the top is the navigation bar. Here you can add a new step, add a section, add a note, maybe collaborate with some colleagues and team members. But the first thing I'm gonna do is update the title. So if you click on it, just click on the title and create a new title. To update the description, you could just double click in the box. And in this case, I'm gonna leave this here and just update the color. To do that, you just click on the color and change the color that you want. Now you can update the subcategory based on the color. 
To add a new step, you hover over the insert new step, click it. To move it around, you simply hold and move to where you want that step to be. Let's go ahead and update this description and call this invoice receipt. I'm gonna change this color to purple and say this is part of our process. To add a connection, you simply hover over where you want the connection to go. The circle will enlarge a little bit, and then you just drag it to the connection, to the step you want connected. To delete that collect connection, just click on it, and then you can hit delete. Let's go ahead and add another step. Move it to where we need to go, want it to go. Double click to update the description. Let's say we want to add more detail to this step. We could simply click the plus sign and edit the description. Since your space is limited, you could add a note. change that color to purple. You can add a note, drag that to where you want it to go. And let's say we wanna add more of a description for that step. Now let's go ahead and create our connections. You can create multiple connections by hovering over the dot, adding where you want the first connection to go, and then where you want the second connection to go. To update the name of the connections, you can just double click on it and update the name. You can also add color to your connections by hovering over the box, over the connection, hitting the color and changing the color. Finally, to end your process, you would just drag drag the connection to the end, which would then end your process. So let's go ahead and take a look at a completed process. So this is an invoice process planner for storing documents into DocuWare. The invoice would be received, stored in DocuWare, and then assigned to the accounting department. Um, once it's assigned to the accounting department, the accounting department would assign the cost center and or the general ledger code. It would then be forwarded to the manager for approval. If the invoice was not greater than $5,000, the manager would then have the ability to approve the invoice, thereby sending it off to booking. If the invoice was over $5,000, then that would require a second approver, which would then have the ability to approve it and send it off to booking. Both the uh, CFO and the manager both have the ability to reject the in invoice and thereby send it back to accounting for adjustment. So now that we have our workflow built out, let's go to DocuWare and look at the workflow designer. Here is the workflow designer with the workflow we just created here built out for processing. Along this sign here is where you would assign a person to the task, what tasks they would be responsible for, what conditions are related to that task whether you want to put a time delay on the task. Let's say you want an invoice held for 30 days. You could put that on there or wait for an event. So let's say you um, receive the invoice, but you're waiting for a packing slip or a PO before the invoice can get pushed through the process. You can add a wait for event. 
We start our workflow, we get the invoice in, get the data from the invoice, the invoice company and invoice amount. It's then put through to accounting who assigns the cost center, uh, who then sends it to the manager for approval. They have the option to approve the invoice. If the invoice is greater than 5,000, it gets sent to a manager. Otherwise, it gets right sent right over to uh, accounting for booking. And again, both department heads, the manager and the CFO, both have the ability to reject the invoice and send it back to accounting. Making updates to any part of this workflow is very simple. You can go into the edit field that opens up that specific task within the workflow. And you can see what options you have to, within that specific task for that workflow. You can add additional decisions. Maybe you want to put this, this invoice on hold instead of just approving or rejecting it. So now that we have our workflow built out, let's go to Docuware and see this workflow in action. Before I do that, let me give you a brief explanation of our interface. So this is our DocuWare interface. It's web-based. So that means as long as you have an internet connection, you have access to your system. At the top, you have the DocuWare trays. DocuWare trays, document trays work similar to a tray on your desk. Documents come in that require attention to be moved through your, through your process. Searches are for once the document goes comes into to the tray, gets stored. Searches is how you retrieve your documents. You're, you're searching within the different file cabinets within your system. Lists can be created um, based on specific index criteria that you need. The task manager, um, once the document is stored, it moves through the approval process or what we call the workflow, would show up in your task list. To bring documents into DocuWare, you can um, import them from your desktop, uh, drag and drop them from your desktop. They can be scanned in um, with a desktop scanner, or maybe your MFP or your printer can be configured to scan documents in directly into DocuWare. We also have a module called Connect to Outlook, where you can configure and have your emails and attach PDFs stored directly into DocuWare, either into your tray or directly into your file cabinet. So what I'm going to do is import a document from my desktop. As the document comes in, you'll see there's a gray bar moving on the document. That's called intelligent indexing. Intelligent indexing in instantly identifies information on the document using machine learning technology, which converts it into index data that is usable and searchable. Now I want to store this document. So I'm going to click on my store dot and hit my store dialog for intelligent indexing. Once I click that, the document will appear on the right side, which is our viewer. If you notice on the left side, here are our index entries. Now these index entries can be generated based on how your company functions. You can have as many index entries as you like with a minimum of one index entry. We require one index entry in order to store a document into your file cabinet. Updating information that was indexed based on intelligent indexing is simple. You can just delete it. And using a functionality called one-click indexing, we can just hover directly over where that information really needs to be, and it drops the information right in. So the next time we bring this document in, it will know to look for the PO number here as opposed to here. Intelligent indexing takes about three to four times for it to receive a document to be 100% confident. So I'm going to go ahead and store this. Now, once I store this document, um, the task list right here will update with a number one to let me know that there's a task that I have to attend to. Now, I'm going to operate in this demo as if I'm multiple people for demo purposes, but typically you wouldn't normally have to go 
from my task to monitor task, but because I'm in the demo as both the accounting admin, the manager, and the CFO, I have to go through a task and monitor task. The first thing we wanna do is assign the cost center. Um, we see you get extreme visibility with DocuWare. If I hover over monitor task, I can see when this document was stored in DocuWare. If you would like, you could set up reminder notifications. So if I don't do anything within five days, I'll receive a reminder notification. Um, I could set a due date notification. So in a couple of days after my reminder date, I still don't do anything. I would receive a due date notification. You can add an escalation. So if even after the due date, I don't do anything, um, my supervisor can be notified that I have a task that I haven't attended to. You can also add a substitution rule. So if I'm out of the office, I can set an out of office. So my task would automatically go to a, co a coworker or a supervisor. So that means that if someone's out of the office, your business processes don't come to a halt, it will just go to the next person within the workflow. You can see who your, work, your document's been assigned to. So if you're waiting for a document and it doesn't come back, you know exactly who you need to talk to to get information on that document. So let's go back to my task and let's go ahead and assign the cost center. Now we'll notice this invoice is above 5,000, so that should kick off the second part of our workflow. Again, I'm just monitoring tasks and my between my tasks to just kind of push the workflow along. As the, man as the manager for this department to approve this invoice, I have the ability to approve and reject. For demo purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and approve this invoice. Now, before I do that though, I wanna check because based on the workflow, I should have received an email notification that I had a task to attend to. So if I'm the type of manager that's not really in DocuWare all the time and I don't get a lot of invoices that I have to approve, I can simply hit the task link here and that will take me directly to the invoice with the task and I can confirm my task directly from here. But let's say I have a lot of invoices that I approve. Maybe I get it on a daily basis or a weekly basis. I can hit the link for the task list. And that will take me to the task list. And then I'll have a list of invoices that I have to approve and I can approve it from there. But I'm the type of manager that's constantly in DocuWare, so I'm looking at my task list notifications and I know there's some things I have to attend to. So I review it, I can see that it's been assigned to me and I'll confirm it. Now, because this invoice was over $5,000, it's been sent to the CFO for their approval. At that point, the CFO can either approve or reject. If they hit reject, they can put the reason for the rejection, hit confirm, and again, it will be routed back to the accounting department for them to do some additional research, maybe get the invoice updated, and put it back within the workflow. So I'm going to go ahead and confirm this invoice and thereby end the workflow. And at this point, the invoice would be completely approved, sent back to accounting for booking of that invoice. Let's go ahead and try to search for that invoice. So if I enter the X key in the store date, I'm gonna get the current date. If I do the plus sign, I get one date forward and the minus sign gives me one date back. You can also hit the calendar to get the, the current date. Let's go ahead and search. So this will bring me back everything I stored um, 
in my system for today. Now, if I'm storing hundreds of documents, this may not make a lot of sense. So let's go ahead and update the search criteria. DocuWare has a functionality called Select List. This allows you to provide consistency within your file cabinet. This makes it so whoever is storing documents into the file cabinet has to select something within, their, within the select list. This then eliminates me calling the document in, an invoice, someone else calling it an invoice in, maybe a third person abbreviating the invoice. Thereby, we would have one vendor with three different document types. So using select list allows you consistency within your file cabinet. Within the company, if I start typing, I should get limited or a reduced result list so that I can just pick from. Now I hit search and that'll bring back in my result list uh, every invoice um, that has the vendor uh, imaging systems with the document type invoice in. Um, if you have the rights to do so, and DocuWare is very rights driven, um, you can assign a user full access rights where they can add users, maybe configure a file cabinet, um, store dialogues, or you can give a user read-only access. So all they can do within your system is open the document, look at it, and close it. So I have the rights to do so. So because I'm a person that's responsible for this particular company, I want to create a list so that anytime somebody stores an invoice for this company, I'll be notified. So if I hover over options and select save list, I can just save a list on the fly. Now, if I go to my list, and hit this list I just created. Now, anytime someone stores an invoice with imaging systems as a company, this notification list will go up. I can open it up. I can see who approved it. I can see how much it is. Maybe there's some follow-up I need to do or some reporting I need to do, but now I'm notified that an invoice has come in. The final thing I want to show you is a functionality called full text searching. So let's say um, I know that the uh, vendor name had imaging in it, um, but that's all I remember. So if I type that in and hit search, now every document that has um, imaging systems on it will be returned to me in my result list. The first time it finds it, it'll be highlighted in red. The second or third or fourth time it finds it, it'll be highlighted in yellow. And this is with because every document we store is stored with OCR technology. So that pretty much concludes the demo. Um, to recap, uh, I showed you how to map out a manual process, uh, a manual process with the process planner. I executed the steps in the workflow designer and finally carried out the workflow in a live system. Customers love us because our software is very easy to use. On G2 Crowd, a leading software review site, we have over 100 customer testimonials and are rated 4.5, 4.4 out of 5. Don't take our word for it. Here's a testimonial from a customer who uses DocuWare. His ability to easily retrieve information from DocuWare allowed him to quickly communicate critical information to his customer base. You can read the full success story, which, can, which you can download in the handout section of your GoToWebinar panel. With that, I'll turn the webinar back over to Nicole and thank you, uh, thank everyone for their time. All right, thank you, Nicole. Thank you for uh, that insight and um, really interesting demo. So with that, we'll open it up for Q&A now. Feel free to start typing any questions you may have in the question box.
If you want to see more and take the next step, you can request a personalized demo at docuer.com slash info slash request a demo. Or if you have any questions about what you just saw, you can email us anytime at contact.us at Or if you're already working with an authorized Docuer partner, definitely reach out to them to get started. Again, what you saw today was introductory, and we're happy to continue the conversation with you if you would like to see more in-depth features and how they can be customized to your organization's processes. So let's take a look at the questions. So the first question is, are workflows available to Docuer Cloud customers, or is it an add-on feature? The workflow module is included for all cloud customers. If you are looking for an on-premises system, it would have to be purchased as an additional add-on module. Great. Next question, is there a way to add a signature step for things such as contracts, for example, DocuSign? Um, so we have a, a module called, uh, we have a partnership with Validated ID that would allow you to add signatures to your contracts if you so choose. Got it. Next question, are you able to integrate an existing workflow workflow from other applications like Visio? Um, I don't believe so, um, but if that person sends an email directly to contact.us.docuware.com, I can verify that information, but I believe that you'd have to build out the workflow within DocuWare uh, from the beginning. Got it, definitely. If you have any questions uh, after the webinar, definitely send us an email. Someone has a is asking about if we have any, what would we recommend for payroll processes? Um, well, DocuWare has uh, a two pre-configured solutions, um, and one of them is employee management. Um, and we do have some functionality with um, maintaining your employees. Um, onboarding processes, but not necessarily paying your employees, more so maintaining your employee records through DocuWare. Got it. Next question, how would this product be implemented? Would someone come on site or can it be done remotely, particularly with everyone staying at home during the current situation? Um, the product can definitely be implemented um, virtually or remotely, I would say. Um, but if the customer chooses to have someone on site, maybe not right now, based on the, the circumstances, uh, we have staff, our professional services staff can go on site to, to implement a product, implement a system. Got it. Next question, can you build metrics to measure workflow milestone steps, such as the cycle time between? Between, I guess between uh, maybe the steps, maybe like that's from Kevin, like maybe like time delays, I guess. I'm not sure, Kevin, if that's what you're asking. We can see if he, he, he asked more. So yeah. I know that you can track how long it takes someone to respond to their task. Um, so that can be tracked in the history of the document how long it takes someone to attend to their task. He, um, yeah, he said, for example, between approval steps, I guess like build in time, like if you want certain days built in between approvals. Um, well, there is a, uh, there is a timed event um, oh, okay. within the workflow that allows you to put the process on hold for us, us specific amount of period of time and then once that time is up the workflow will automatically wake up and start the process again got it next question how long does it take to get up and running with docker for accounts payable um, so as I mentioned previously, we have a pre-configured solution for accounts payable as well as human resources. Uh, they can reach out to either 
us directly or their authorized document partner for a demo. It depends on whether the pre-configured solution works for you. If it does, the uh, startup time is fairly quick because all the workflows in the background have been done in advance. The file cabinets are already set up. The workflows are set up. You simply have to add your um, general ledger codes and your cost centers to really get started. Now, if you're starting a system completely from scratch to customize it based on exactly how your, your uh, company functions, that might take a little longer than, you know, than our pre-configured solution. Got it. But it all depends on the complexity of, of the system and what and what's required. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And again, for anyone still on the line, but you have to run, we'll definitely send out the recording. Again, if you have any questions, you can email us anytime. We have a few more questions before we wrap up. Um, so just the next few, the first one being, can Docuer get data from any ERP? Something, Docuer can get data from any ERP that the customer can get, right? I'm not sure. <laughs> Did you... Um, so we can connect to a customer's database, um, getting the information from the ERP, uh, I'd have to verify that. I know that we can import information into an ERP using the CSV file. Um, we have a CSV file that can be created and gives you the ability to upload the information. Now, if you want to bring information out of DocuWare, we have to use a database connection to get that information into DocuWare. Got it. And then a few people asked a similar question, so I'll just ask it. Um, how do you connect the process planner and the workflow designer? Do they connect? So they do not connect. So basically you're building your process, you're walking through your, your manual process and you're putting it in the process planner. And then you're building that process out in your workflow. So the two don't connect, but you can kind of mirror the two once the, once the process is built in the process planner, you can build it out in the workflow designer. Right, and then also, again, the process planner is a free tool. So even if you don't have Docker at the moment right now, you can start mapping out processes before you even, you know, jump into Docker. You can get everyone on board and figure out what exactly you need to do. Um, so definitely use that free tool. And let's see, we'll take one more question um, before we wrap up. So let's see. Are you able to edit forms from a worksheet after submitting it into the system? Are you able to edit a form? So what you can edit is because when oh, we're talking about DocuWare forms, once the form is created and then submitted, it's stored into DocuWare. So what you can edit are the index entries once the form is submitted. So not the actual form itself because that that document is a PDF document that's been stored in, but you would be able to update the index entries of that form once the form is submitted. Got it. All right. I believe that's all the time we have for today. Thank you again for everyone joining us, taking the time out of your afternoon to join us for the solution demo. We really appreciate it. Again, we wish safe and healthy for you and your family members. Look out for an email tomorrow morning with the recording, the slides, the um, handouts, if you didn't get a chance to download them. And if you have any further questions, email us at contact.us.docuware.com and we'll, we'll get to it as soon as possible. All right, everyone. Thank you and have a great rest of your day. Take care. Thanks, everyone.